Okay. Okay. We can so welcome everybody. We are happy to present you the results of our great uh, pricing experiment. And um, yeah, what what we did is um, we we made the most simple way because we had to do the pricing for our own products, of course, with the same instrument like we offer as a product. So we we made an a really, really interesting experiment and took the pricing of our product into the hands of our own software. So Frank, yeah, the stage is yours. Stage is mine. Yeah. Hi, hello everybody. Good. So um yeah, let's let's start. Um and before I share the agenda thank you very much for participating in the survey i know it's always uh a burden to take part in surveys although this was really quick and i'm really interested to to hear um what our experiences with the survey was we talk about this later um but all of you who entered um their address uh get the copy the hard copy shipped home so this is right now has been has been published I'm not sure if amazon already shows it because it's always lacking a few a few days when you push publish but yeah we are we are excited to have this this book out and hope you hope you like it so again uh, it may take one or two weeks to send it out and also uh, it is because it's sent out over amazon it is uh, basically applicable uh, for the main shops uh, amazon has basically use usa canada uk germany italy france spain i think that's it right all others uh get get uh, the ebook okay cool um so let's talk about the agenda for today uh first before we show you the results we need to give you the background right the background is pricing research and we like to share as well uh very quickly very briefly uh, the study of the University of Westphalia who compared different pricing methods. This may take not more than max 10 minutes here in the background. But then we go into the experiment, how we set it up, what was the results, and how do we implement the findings? So, and we will have, we will conclude, but um, most importantly, why I'm interested in, in your feedback and your questions, uh, and we will not only afterwards discuss your questions, so feel free to write into the Q&A your questions. So Wolfgang will review that uh, and interrupt me if there are instant questions. So let's keep this as, as, as a dialogue as much as possible. Cool, that's it. Um, let's go for it. Uh, let's quickly talk about the background. The background is pricing research. And to our assessment, pricing research has uh, four problems today. First problem is it is expert-owned. Expert-owned means actually if you want to do it, you need to reach out to an expert because to do pricing research right, uh, it turns out to be not so easy. Yeah, it turns out to be complicated, and even if you are uh, working in a market research agency, there are typically only one or two people really able to set up a conjoint measurement step. So this means if if it's expert owned, 
it's not democratized, right? So you need to reach out to someone. It takes time, it takes money and so forth. And this also means it's slow. It takes weeks, not days. Uh, and it's expensive, um, depending on the method, of course. If you, if you use a highly valued method, it's typically expensive. So doing a conjoint uh, 10K or even for big uh, studies, 100K is, is, is possible, right? But the validity is sometimes questionable, and we talk about this in a minute. Um, I think we wanted to do quick poll you, right? To do make it interactive and ask you uh, to which extent do you agree to those points? Um, I, I launch it, right, Wolfgang? Sorry. I'm I'm launching the the poll right now. Yes, please. So, just um, it's open here. You can uh, agree to each of those points. Just uh, it's a multiple choice thing. You you can just let us know to what e extent you agree that the existing price uh, research methods have these problems. Oh, we're waiting a few more seconds. It's an interesting race, so I'm I'm seeing the results live, still moving. Cool. So now it's not moving anymore. Let me publish the results. Um, here we go. So seventy percent agree that the expert owned feature is really the key problem and still one third or more agree to the other three uh, problems so so the key bottleneck is actually that it's not democratized very interesting thanks for sharing So when this is a problem, how can we, how can we improve? So what's what's the problem? Uh, why do existing methods fail? Uh, and the answer is buying decisions are implicit. What does it mean? All of you know system one and system two theory of Kahneman, which basically says that decisions are ninety five percent intuitive and instinctive. So if we want to understand decision-making and when you, we talk about pricing, it's basically, we want to know if someone wants to buy at a certain price. It's about a decision. And uh, if we want to measure decisions, uh, we may think of measuring the implicit knowledge of customers. So for implicit measurement, there are different methods out there. The EEG, um, electro uh, EEG, and the FMRG, and the IAT, so implicit association test. So all of them are have their strengths, and the implicit association test is particularly interesting because um yeah it is feasible to do online yeah eg or for fmrg you need a lab um and that's why um that's why it's interesting that's why the method of implicit association uh, implicit intelligence uses the implicit association test so the research gap we yeah. have a we have a question here from from jose Mm -hmm. He's asking, is there any evidence that support that current methods are failing? Yeah, we will we will show the um, we will show the results of the University of Australia, but um, if you if you interview uh, professionals who are doing 
price research, they in they out, they know the limits of existing um, methods. Um, so there is phase validity in that, and there is evidence as well, as we will see. Uh, but of course, it's it's a black and white statement. So it's probably they they do a good job, but obviously it can can become much better, and this means profit. So uh, basically, we have um, we have methods which are inexpensive, like Galva Granger, and we have methods that are uh, as least quoted as being highly reliable. And there is um, a gap which um, we want to fill with the supra price optimal value. Um, and this is be backed with research of 20 years uh, based on the University of Hanover, first published by Steffen Schmidt. Um, and uh, we at uh, Supra develop this further. So but the basic idea behind uh, the methodology of implicit price intelligence is to combine the implicit association test, AIT, with artificial intelligence, causal machine learning. Yeah, when we you combine both, you measure the implicit and you also debias a certain uh, effects from the market research, you land with a method which is better, better, easier, faster, and has fewer costs to process it. So yeah, you can say, is there evidence? So let's talk about evidence. Uh, there is a, um, a study from the University of Australia, and we are happy to send you the full report, which looked on different uh, things. So they applied four methods, implicit uh, uh, price intelligence, Gabor Granger, Van Westenop and CBC, and looked at phase validity. Does it predict uh, the uplift of a promotion? And does the demand prediction correlate well with a real market re market share? And in all of those things, uh, the implicit price intelligence uh, performed best. And the conclusion of the study was that all of those methods have their application field. Yeah. Uh, so conjoint is obviously, and also if you look at the literature, optimal for uh, optimizing products. Van Westenop is great for exploring the price range. Gabor Granger is uh, applicable for having a quick, cheap, and easy assessment. And the implicit price intelligence uh, had the best um, validity on the task to find the optimal price. So that's about the background. Um, and if any questions before we come to the experiment? Uh, maybe maybe I have a question uh, to to you in the call who took the took the uh, survey participated. What was your um, first impression when doing the doing the survey? So just just to get some feedback, uh, what was your your gut feeling about it? Just put it, uh, put just a, a sentence in the in the chat, if you may. Now, uh, Frank, what um, I I don't know if I only see in the chat functionality. I only see hosts and discussion uh, um, members, and I think the. Chat is disabled, so yeah. you put it in the Q and A. So that's yeah. that's good. Uh, there was a question. Yes, Ian. Uh, yes, Ian is 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 um, informing us that chat is disabled. Uh, so yes, so please use this F and A channel. Yeah. So maybe this is too cumbersome. This question. 
but uh, I'll give you 10 more seconds to tap something. The, the, yeah, one, one is, someone is writing, the survey was easy enough. Be useful to have your view if the implicit background stands true for new products in, in new areas, areas versus new SCUS SKUs in established categories. Yeah. So indeed, the what's implicit, what the methodology is doing, it it measures your implicit your gut feeling about the product. And that's basically what people have if they see the product. If they are first confronted with something they haven't known before, they still have an opinion. And this opinion uh, very much guides their reaction to it. Yeah, And so it's um, actually universal. Um, and especially useful for new products. Another one I found it a bit confusing, lots of relay, related but different questions that were hard to answer quickly, had to think hard about questions, right? <laughs> so that's um, that, that can be true. And basically, if you need to think, yeah, that then you don't have an opinion. Uh, yeah, so you are neutral and that's that's what we, want to know and um, there is a saying in pricing uh, confused minds don't buy so if you need to think chances are high that you don't buy the first impression was wide wide range of potential prices suggested yeah that's was intended but I didn't recall the product features I struggled to react to don't want yeah it sometimes you you are puzzled uh, from a from a point of view, but basically that's okay, right? So that's okay that if your neocortex don't know the answer. Um, so we re it really measures the implicit uh, gut feeling. The survey makes sense. Would be great to have free access to the tool to test it more. Good to know what this methodology to be applicable for B two B in which the purchase decision maker is very structured and rational. A yeah, good point. So um, the method basically is applicable for B2B if there is one main decision maker. Yeah. So this, then you survey this decision maker. But if you Frank, have, perhaps you show the, the case in the backup. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Let, let me let me quickly answer this. If you have a, um, a buying uh, buying group, yeah, then you have many decision makers, and then you would you would like to uh, interview uh, each of them or have a mix of them. Yeah. So um, so that's that has not been the focus so far yeah the buying the buying decision center um this is really about standardized products where typically there's a one major decision maker or influencer um cool so let's go into uh the experiment so basically um what we did is we wanted to know the uh, price demand function for our own offering, which is um, a, a research platform for price tests, right? And this is the past pricing. So basically we had a pilot for 900 euro and 600 is a standard 600 you can get if you buy at least 10 and and you get uh, a lower price if you have buy 30 60 so so a credit is basically one product test yeah so that was a past pricing so but, but to to make it 
um, easy and applicable for for the uh, survey. We simply ask you what would you buy for one price test, right? So and now I'm I'm going to show you the results, and for that I'm I will go into the tool. Uh, okay, I think. I need to log in again. So basically, if you want to set up uh, something yourself, you go into three steps, right? You create the survey. So let me show you. Basically, I have here the super price optimizer. It's simply set up as an agency mode where we get a link uh, that can be uh, pop, pasted in an email. That, that's what we did, right? Got the survey link out of it. So then you set up the survey by having the price, uh, the name, a short description, and a picture. And then you basically say, hey, what's which price is, what's the typical price I would expect? What's a high price? What's a low price? And then the tool suggests seven price points, which you need to, uh, which it will test. And you can uh, actually edit them, right? And once you have that, done that, it's it's set up. Yeah? So it should not take more than five minutes to set up. You can add more, more products uh, by pushing this, this button, okay? But yeah, let's let's look into the results. So what you let me explain you a bit what you see here, right? So we interviewed forty five people. So uh, that's a for for B two B. It's it's a typical number, right? For B two C, you would like to have more. So typically we do hundred for B two B B two C. But even with forty five we get pretty stable results. And there are some reasons for that. Uh, so average age is 45. And we have typically nobody bought, nearly maybe one bought the product already. Uh, only 11% are customers of, of our company. Yeah? And maybe 20% know us. Right? And the most, uh, and basically 41% are have high demand for price tests. So that's some background, some context information. But now let's look at the important uh, findings. So the orange uh, curve here is the price demand function. Yeah. So this are the 150 and this are the 600 euros. So what it shows you that the highest sales uh, or demand uh, is expected by 300 euros. But actually, if you if it gets cheaper, people think it's, uh, they have uh, a bad feeling about it. Yeah? It's too cheap. Um, and yeah, the demand drops dramatically when it gets, gets higher than 600, right? So, but important is now the profit line. And the profit is computed out of, you need to know th three things, the costs to goods, uh, costs to make it. So which costs, which direct costs do we have with every single, uh, with every single product test? Uh, is there a uh, tax in it? So we don't have tax here because it's a B2B product and we don't have retail margin here because we sell directly. And the costs actually are different depending on the context. So if we are uh, running a B2B survey, we don't, uh, and we don't have a panel, but we send the link out to the audience of basically the address list of the customer. We may have some quality check costs you know, like that. Um, or if we reach out to a sample, uh, it very much depends on the incidence rate of, of the audience, right? So if it's a general public uh, population survey, it can be something around 100 or 200. But you see that this range 
typically always the optimum is at 600 price. And only if the costs to make gets like over 400, yeah, over 400, the optimal price is, is 900. Yeah. So that's basically the finding that for all different applications, depending on the costs, the, the profit optimal price is at 600. And the um, and if only if we have a high a high panel costs behind that, we, we should uh, have an upcharge for that of three hundred or so. So and uh, yeah, that's that. That are the findings. The question now is, how do we? Uh, what do we do with it? So how we change now our pricing strategy? Before I'm showing the pricing strategy, um, any questions? Um, yeah, we have some some questions here. They were um, regarding um, the the topics before. It is George was asking how to um, how do account for rapid changes in the macro environment, for example inflation spending capacity change etc that could invalidate initial estimates yeah that's that's true if things change things change right so um and the only cure is to measure again then another question is what about the effect of maybe maybe uh, one final note you may when asking this you may think of market simulation right um, and yes, you can do that. You can measure your product. You can measure uh, competitive products, and what you what you get out of it, you can put in a market simulator. So we have a this as an Excel tool, yeah. Uh, so if you do that, you get an Excel tool from us. They can then simulate basically when the the environment basically if the competition changes prices right if they change prices what does it mean to your price demand function you can simulate that but you of course cannot simulate everything like i don't know uh, so uh, sooner or later you need to retest and uh, think if perception of customers have changed then another question was, what about the effect of stimulus? Very visual with some brand narrative and advantages versus the light amount of information for your tool. So I'm not sure if I got that. Uh, what's yeah, it? The influence of, of branding and and um, because what we measure is not is not the the um, or what what the yeah the ask the asker. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but, we, we yeah, try to yeah. we try to give as much uh, information as possible. So it's even if it required, you can even add an explainer video to the description of the product, right? So you can have a very detailed description of the product, so that uh, yeah, the 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 goal is that before taking the implicit association test. Uh, the respondent is as formed as people are in the in the buying decision, right? And if they are typically, if you have consumer products, they are not very much informed, right? Say a one liner of text is enough. And Nihit is asking, uh, also back to the to the survey, yes or no were asked on four or five different criteria such as whiskey, buy, et cetera. How did you arrive at the demand function from those four or five different measures? Good question. So that's uh, where I can uh, go into this discussion here. Uh, uh, the, the right side here uh, explained that a bit. So basically we have, we measure I buy. I buy, right? So I buy, the implicit answer of I buy is 
the implicit measurement of whether or not someone wants to buy at this price. This information is biased by some factors I'm marked here as, as green. Uh, and But it can be well predicted by indicators. The indicators are uh, yeah, fair, attractive, risky, don't want. So this uh, is based on years of research. These are uh, intentionally fuzzy items that help us to predict the I buy without uh, basically by eliminating external factors. Um, so external factors are, for instance, that someone needs this stuff right now. So if yeah, if you ask a, a burger, uh, the, in, if someone is hungry and wants to have a burger right now, he has a higher uh, likely to push, I buy. But he would not necessarily say, hey, it's, uh, it's attractive, it's, it's fair, it's risky and so forth. So we eliminate sit situational external uh, biases. And we, uh, so we do that by Model, modeling with causal modeling. So basically we take all those information on the left to predict the I buy uh, information, all right? And uh, with that model, we can eliminate first the externals and, and second, we can eliminate uh, other factors. For need is um, if people are uh, buying a, a lot of those stuff, right? That's um, they are, uh, this information is used to weight a, a, a case higher, right? So that makes it more realistic if heavy buyers have a, have more impact on the say, it's demand function, uh, price demand function. The a second influence, which were very important, is our price anchors. So if you take the survey, right, and suddenly there's a 1,000 euro, and then comes... Um, then comes another price, but basically there's never a price higher than 1,000, then the 1,000 seems, seems to be high. And the opposite, with the lowest price of 150, yeah, well, you see different prices, but basically 150 is the lowest you experience, so it seems low, but only because of you seen the other examples. So basically, the, this uh, price test, it has... It's influence itself, it has a bias, right? So the bias would not happen if you just ask one price, but because we ask several prices, uh, it biases itself. But in modeling, we can find out whether or not the buy uh, information can be, is caused by the price uh, anchor, by the uh, way, the uh, basically where the price is, or by the indicators. Yeah, so I know it's it's heavy stuff, but let me uh, um, summarize quickly. So basically, the causal AI modeling is for debiasing the information. So from this very simple survey, we get a pretty robust uh, um, demand function. So on the left, you see. A, uh, some um, uh, an explanation where the red line is uh, the share of people who said I buy. Right? It's still uh, it's, uh, but it's the explicit answer of I buy. But if you have use the time they they react, and if you debias. Uh, from those uh, all those information, you arrive at the green line, and you see that uh, if you have a quick look, you say, "Oh, it's, it's the same." No, it's it's very different. Um, yeah. So from the red line, you would you would price at four hundred fifty, not six hundred. Uh, you would overestimate the impact of seven hundred fifty. Yeah, and you would wrongly assume that the 550 would even sell more. Yeah, so that's basically, um, we compare again, 
implicit price intelligence combines implicit measures with causal AI debiasing. Yeah. So it sounds like heavy science, but basically uh, the, the input and the output is simple, and that's that's all our intention to just make it predictive. Uh, and now I'm showing you what we did with that. So again, this was the structure, the past structure, uh, the pilot with, with one uh, price test and the standard was 10 price tests. And basically what we did is, hey, we need to sell one price test for 600, right? So that's basically the, uh, the learning, right? The learning is 600 is the optimum. And at 900, yeah, we sell one third, right? So uh, we should not sell the pilot for 900. We shall, shall also sell the pilot for 600 to enable customers uh, to try it, right? So that's that's why we aim for the new price is 600 for one price test, right? Not 10, but one. So in this term, it got a bit cheaper, right? And, uh, but still from a price strategy uh, point of view, we still use the three packages framework, right? The three packages framework is you have a, uh, a package which is the price anchor, which basically tells you what's the value of what you're getting, yeah? So uh, on the left, that's a price anchor. And on the right, it is basically a, a, a volume discount, yeah? So we see uh, that, let, let's go back, going from 600 to 500 is not uh, dramatically in, improving the demand, right? So that's why we increased the uh, threshold of the 500 uh, price to, to 100 credits, right? And again, the pilot here, the price anchor, this is not uh, a self-study anymore. This is something very different now. It's a full service study. So let me explain. When a market research agency sells such an analysis, it adds its consultant, consulting service to it. And typically uh, the prices on the market is 2,500 to 7,500 or so. So in this range uh, is um, a price test, right? Where you can sell. So we add this full service uh, pilot yeah, for someone who needs full service. Um, but basically, uh, as the main intention to have a price anchor. The standard uh, is for self-service, but new customers still get um, a free setup workshop um, and, and free results workshop. So that's what, what we did with that. Um, questions? Yes, Ian is asking, can you do segmentation on the results? Those with experience of a product or other factors will have a different level of price acceptance. I'd want to ask additional questions around the main survey to understand customer segments. Yeah, so that's uh, what we call agency mode. Yeah. You can do your own survey and uh, this survey is redirecting to our our questionnaire so and you get the raw data basically the uh, demand prediction for every single respondent from our system so and with that you can survey more than uh, 45 or so you know, I would not recommend to do further segmentation on 45 responses but if you have a larger sample 
you can do that and you can do that because you get uh, the raw data basically case data from us and, and you can do your your segmentation with that other questions There was an anom anonymous person writing a few, but I have to to thought. He's asking, is it always will buy fair, appropriate, don't want? I think he he mm -hmm. he's he's uh, uh, asking regarding the survey. Yeah, it's it's always that way. But basically, the interesting part is that which of those items are important to predict the buying is different per product category right and per product and basically the machine learning mechanism finds it out every time anew and also asking and how are these translated into demand again it's it's uh, the prediction model uh predicts the demand for every respondent and um yeah it's it is then debiased by those contact factors which prize it uh how much uh what's the need of it and so forth there are some is a, a debiasing mechanism in it yeah but this is this I have no 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 more question here in the list cool let me Let's wrap up with um, my summary of applications, and then we can go into more more questions. Um, so, you know, you have seen now an application in B two B, and it's it's a wonderful example because we just surveyed uh, forty five um, people, right? And we we could have get more if if uh, the server would have been also mobile available it will be next week sorry for that um but yeah it is it is interesting that with 45 you can get robust results and the reason is that we don't just ask uh, respond one time right uh, because we know that an answer of a response is typical typically noisy right so Sometimes you, uh, if you ask the same person again, next time he would answer a little bit different because he's tired or whatever. But we ask five, five times, uh, five questions. Yeah? With these five questions, we could mean out uh, noise with a machine learning model. So it's actually four times more robust uh, than, than conventional measures. Um, so that's, that's why it's uh, super um interesting for b2b but there are other applications for instance smb brands uh in uh in consumer products they have the problem that uh if you if you are not a large brand you, know, you want to have the sales data and sales data from, from the retailers it's quite expensive right so and companies which do 100 million or less uh and revenue they they cannot afford those 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 data so uh running price tests on all of their SKUs is is now possible because it's not not expensive anymore and it's fast um also retailers can now uh um price their white label because there are brands on its own right and they have lots of that. So again, they don't do it right now because of several factors, but most of the factors are they have so much products. But if a product test is just 600 bucks, it now gets feasible to, to test at least the most important ones regularly. New products, that's actually, of course, every new product needs a pr price test because that's just one, one uh, factor where uh new products fail and if if you the, the pricing is too high or too low um they will not survive the first time uh discount uplift yeah 
how much should I discount in promotions my product? Typically, it's just yeah, experience or gut feeling. Uh, yeah, but uh, what's what's the best prediction? And even for retailers, yeah, they put a pro, pro, uh, product on front of the leaf letter, but they don't know what will the impact be because it's a new product. They have never done it for this product before. And to spend 600 bucks to know what's the uplift, pretty useful. Packaging design, same thing, right? So you could test different packaging designs, see what's the impact of a buying decision. And uh, actually the price test, this price is, is quite, it's also a packaging test, right? But it tells you what's what are the bottom line impact of it. And this seventh point is that interesting application and we do another webinar on that uh, in April is to compare pricing for new customers and for repeat buyers. Uh, this is interesting for products who are very good. Let's put it this way. So if there's a product and you, you try it and you fall it, in love with that because it's so good, then the willingness to pay changes, right? So in this time, in this regard, you would like to know if you have such, such a product. And if you have that, you would rather price it according to the repeat buyers and try to win new, new customers by regular promotions. So that's our just out of our head, seven interesting applications. And before we wrap up, I would like to know uh, which of those applications do you think are you uh, are useful? So, not which are most useful, which are useful, so that we know. Oh, there are some where you doubt it's useful. So, um, oh, I I didn't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This was a past one. Okay. Wait a minute. Ah, uh, here we go. Now, where is it? It's the second one, right? This yeah. one. Yeah. So, yeah, just 30 seconds. Please let us know. Um, we, we only saw four. We have just listed the top four, I think. Huh? That's a pity, but next time we know. Yeah. Okay, 10 more seconds. Cool. So I am ending now. So results are the winners are new products. Uh, indeed, that's most obvious. Uh, followed also 50% B2B and SMB um, and retailers are 23%. Uh, Thanks for letting us know. And let's yeah, Katie, wrap up yeah. with uh, some, some more questions. Yeah, Katie is asking, uh, what, challenges, what challenges me is the efficiency of the answers of those who surveyed how are they sourced are they paid in essence who are they so many ways and reasons the information provided by those surveyed could be skewed and therefore inaccurate yeah that's that's uh that's true so the um so the question depends on the situation all yeah, right so we have three ways you can uh, deal with that or you can proceed. The first way is the agency mode where basically you are organizing the field, basically getting the uh, respondents and sharing the link with it. 
right? So basically, if you have a very special case uh, and you want to take care that the right people are interviewed, you do the field by yourself. So the second thing is, uh, the second way is uh, that basically you reach out to our panel. Yeah, so we are uh, accessing standard uh, world's largest panels. And typically, so again, it depends on, 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 on the category, but basically we are interviewing category buyers. Uh, and of course, you can add screener questions. So for instance, so we did just, we did uh, pet food, right? And then you only want to interview those who buy in special shops, not not in uh, in grocery. Yeah, that's what you can add as an additional screener question, where you can make sure um, your uh, answer is not screwed. Screwed. Yeah, Frank. I also remember some projects where we where we had um, a clear profile of the people who who um, we need the information from you can make it by by the by the job title for example and we had some some um, b2b uh, um, cases where where it was super clear that if the person x has uh, um, uh, is 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 managing a special type of software um, and developing this software, then we know exactly that the, that he's the right person to ask, and and that he's serious about the yeah. the real topic. And we have really really good. This was um, um, my impression was that that this I could at, at the beginning when we started, uh, uh, I could not believe how how super uh, um, yeah super targeted the the results were i i was thinking like you katie i was thinking uh, um yeah what what if people are paid for it then they just uh, want to to move move out of this survey because they get money for it but but here also frank included in his cautional ai he included this um he can find out by by the behavior the people um have and he finds his his cautional AI, he sees the people who are who are not serious, and and this this um, yeah, and this is a huge. I think this is one of the most strong features of this software to make this so clear. And this is the reason why Frank is also that that in only forty five uh, 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 people making the survey is is so has so much insight. Perhaps if you have not this quality, you you can ask one thousand people, and with the same results. And this and this combination of screener questions, of your intelligence putting into the survey, and the the causal AI, all this together makes it so so super detailed and 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 successful. Um, yes, and we are doing it the whole day, and and it is really amazing what people are reporting us when they when they uh, uh, when they put and they 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 need a few days or sometimes a few months to realize the power of of this kind of pricing and yes and then they start to to make more products on it because most of them are focused on one two three products um yeah but but at the end they have 50 or 100 products and at the end they 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 start making more and more and this is also a huge advantage this is a speed you get on this this topic because many people are are because of their un, because they are unsecure what to do they are talking a lot making meetings and researching everywhere and so it takes weeks until they have a price for a product and here this is yeah nearly fully automated so so you can in the in the best case and you can you can start a you can start a project a pricing project and 24 to 48 hours later you get the results like frank showed you on the screen and you can and this is the reason why are you why are you making pricing you are you're making pricing to make profit and time is money and the faster you get the results the better the results are 
And the more products you can push into this pipeline and the more profit you can make at the end. Yeah. So in a few years, I think it's it will be a lot of things will be automated this way and 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 giving you an an, an advantage. Uh, there's there's basically um let's put it this way, right? So this this message, what our vision is to make it super simple to democratize pricing research right and by doing that you will make also some some you will have an error bar um right and if you feel you need to customize that that's possible that's our agency mode but our intention and our technology what we are doing with those debiasing is to actually eliminate the need for that and what we see is 80%, 90% of cases, agencies overcomplicate things. The results are pretty similar uh, if you uh, if you don't do that. So other questions? <laughs> yes, Julio, Julio, Julio is asking, um, he is commenting, I advise startup CEOs across Europe and Israel, segmenting, segmentation, packaging and pricing is always a key topic. The focus is B2B. I would love to know more about your offering as well as a practical implementation and impact. Oh, thank you, Julio. This is an, a nice comment. And Ian is asking, feel, uh, we will come back to you later, of course. Ian is asking, feels like it needs to be a simple to describe product to work. Complex concepts won't work. Um, let, I would agree and disagree. Uh, I agree because, yeah, how can I disagree? So that's, of course, if it's super complicated, some, everything gets complicated. But I don't know any method which can work better with complex methods. So you have the opportunity to describe any kind of complexity before doing the test. So, uh, yeah, in, in conjoint, you have just some bullet points which is altered which is not a comprehensive description of a of a product so uh if i compare different methods this methods allow for the most complex uh description of products that's my that's my point sasa is asking please comment how how would you would your best advice the typical producer who uses different packages in size and material, promotion campaigns, paying for three, acquiring four pieces, strategies at similar? Uh, so what, what's, what's the question? Yeah, the question. Yeah, what? Um, how you how you deal with it? How we deal with it? So yeah, you deal with that by setting up each 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 SKU is a product. Bundle. Right. And each bundle will be a product, right? Right. So, right. It's it's not uh, optimizing features. It, you just have a product, and if you have lots of different products, you have lots of different tests. Yeah. So price increase, but you can also find shortcuts, right? So you you basically, if you have products in different sizes. You don't need to test every product with different sizes. You just do a few with the different sizes and you see a pattern, right? You see a pattern of the sizes of the product. So there are uh, rules where you can uh, eliminate complexity, but the basic idea is one SKU, one test. Sasa is also asking, is the program applicable for merchandise producers and for the services providers too. Yes, so, sorry. I mean, uh, asking, yeah, yeah. If, if it's for services and 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 yes, products, producers. for services. Uh, so we have examples for services. And if you if, if you are a retailer, it's applicable because you're there. You just choose and uh, I'm a basically you optimize the retail margin. And if you are a, a, a merchant, it's also applicable. Uh, you basically uh, 
assume you are a brand with, without, um, yeah, basically you assume a brand and you optimize, um, you optimize your, your profit. So, so I, ha yeah. I have no new questions here. Well, yeah, we are. Ah, uh, uh, no, no, there's a, do you want to I button? No, I have many. Uh, yeah, okay. So we have no new, uh, uh, no new questions here. Wonderful. So uh, again, if you have more questions or want to go into your certain case or want to go in, uh, through with us through the tool, just contact Wolfgang or me at Wolfgang at Super Tools or Frank at Super Tools. Um, if writing emails to cumbersome just go to our website push the get a demo button and uh yeah and or access free and you can you can make your own you can simulate your own uh, in an expert judgment modus you can you can play around with the tool exactly so maybe i can show that to you if you are uh you can basically open your own account uh for free right you go here, where is it? Um, and open your, then this will be uh, basically empty, but basically you, you create a survey, you add a product, and then you go here and uh, push yeah, free expert judgment. That you push here, start. What you see is you basically enter what the experts in your company assume how many of 100 people would buy at this price. You just enter that, what you assume the result of the study will be. And as a result, uh, as a result, you can watch what the result would be, right? So you basically have the, the, the ability to play around with the different assumptions. Um, so you, this is all free and you can already have some, some value from that. But basically, if you need to, if you want to, the opinion of the customer, you need to ask them. Cool. So I think we are uh, full, full hour is completed. Thanks again that so many joined us today. Hope this was useful. Uh, again, um, reach out to us with any questions. And uh, yeah, looking forward to talk with you in person. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.